ToonGrin.com Hello and welcome to Watching Stuff, the show about watching stuff. And after two weeks, two weeks, one okay. We'll explain what happened. One week was solely dedicated to us working to get the Samurai Jack review out for Series Five. Yeah. By all means, be sure to go check that out. It was a cool season. Just check out the video if you haven't seen that. I do also recommend watching the first half, which the first portion covers um, my thoughts and critiquing of seasons one through four. Yep, so that but, explains, explains that week. But the week before, we were trying to work on our Cartoon Network month. We are going to review a bunch of like Cartoon Network movies and such. And we started off with regular show, and that that went fine. But then we went on to Dexter's Lab Ego Trip. The first recording went well, but then the footage got deleted in the transfer and everything. And then we had several different recordings after that. This took us... No joke. We tried on at least six separate occasions to sit down and discuss Dexter's Lab Ego Trip. Six times, and every time... After the first one, it was a file transfer error. Sucks, but it happens. We could deal with that. We were fine. Yeah. You know, we, we said, oh shit, that sucks, but you know what? No big. We'll, we'll pick up on it. We try to record, and my computer crashes. We try and record again, and my computer crashes. We try and record again, and my computer crashes. So you know what? <laughs> Dexter's Lab, Ego Trip can go fuck itself. It gets a rock bottom. It would have gotten a fucking it, it, it would have gotten a must see or a good watch. But you know what? Fuck it. it gets a rock bottom. Because that is bullshit. I'll, I'll give it an actual rating and not just a petty one like Nero's giving. It's a good it's watch. It's not petty. Yeah, it's petty. It's, 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 the, it's not the, petty. It's not petty. The fucking, the fucking movie was fucking cursed. <laughs> No, it was just bad coincidence after bad coincidence. <laughs> okay, no. A coincidence is it happens maybe once or t- twice. Six times? It's a fucking curse. It is like the mummy itself came from ancient Egypt and was like, and cursed us. <laughs> Whatever you say, man. I'll, I'll give it a good good watch. It was a fun, goofy little thing. That time it is. It really is. Sort of it's, it's, it's a cool flick, but... F- Fuck that. Yeah. You know why? Because we were talking and you know, why boy, this is this is sort of your your brain baby. But you said, you know, there's it's a, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, you, you had told me <laughs> that there's so many like rising artists coming out now more than ever that want to produce animation. And with the advent of something like YouTube, people are able to post their creations online, allowing the, you know, the the world at large to see what they do. And in a way, it allows us as as fans, as watchers to come together and say to the creator, "We would support you on this if you were to follow this endeavor." I remember a while back you had shown me Infinity Train. Yeah. And I had seen it with you, and I said to you, I'm like, man, I hope Cartoon Network picks this up, because this looks really good. Yeah, then and we I'm also, sure one, yeah, then we also sure watched stuff like up. Nova Seed as well, and we could see the where where people can go off from there. there. Just like we had, had the raw base of it as its own movie, but we, but you said yourself you wanted to see it more in graphic novel form, or just expanding on itself. And we can see yeah. that in a lot of online animation. There's a lot of experimentation going on different art styles and such and that's sort of what i wanted to go into which is what you know my old series white boy spotlight is all about just spotlighting different sort of animated movies and such but i wanted to transition into actually going into online animation that makes sense yeah. too because even though we're a small channel at the time of this video who knows where we'll be in a couple of years or anything but as as a current channel we are right now even though we are small we do find that why not, in a way, give back to the community? Why not give back to our fellow artists 
who love animation so much that they'll actually make it. Yeah. You know, why not give back to them a little bit? And I like that idea. I really thought you had a good idea, and I ended up going on Facebook, and I found us a short thesis film. Yeah, someone asked us to review it, right? No, no one asked us. Someone just posted it online, and I found it, and I said, oh, man, is it cool if, like, I discuss this on our show? I, I didn't want anyone to be uncomfortable uh, about it, mm-hmm. but there, th- someone, you know, the person who posted said, like, oh, yeah, sure, go for it. That'd be really cool. The um, The thesis film is created by, I'm trying to, so, excuse me if I mispronounce yeah, your name. Yeah, Michelle Krivenek, something like that. Yeah, Michelle Krivenek, which sounds like it might be Russian or Hungarian or something. I don't know. Really cool last name, though. Yeah. It's, it's it's not a common name, so that's why it's so cool. Um, student from the School of Visual Arts did this 2017 thesis film called Buccaneer, which I, I got to bring this up. There is a novel called The Last Buccaneer. <laughs> it's spelled so the just, exact same way. It's spelled the exact same way. Michelle, I'm just saying... Be careful in terms of legality. I'm not saying you're at fault or anything. I'm saying there are dicks out there that w- would sue people for less. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So just be cautious. Yeah, definitely, if you want to just expand this into something else, which we, which just going into our final thoughts already, like we feel that this could go off into different, like bigger places. We feel. Yeah. Yeah. There's a novel called The Last Buccaneer by Matthew Pearl. So. Just be cautious, you know, you know, I'm sure your intent was like, oh, you know, because your story, obviously the way it's like described, you have your main character, a curious librarian that's named uh, Abigail or Abby, and she gets pulled into a book that has this sort of science Final Fantasy kind of esque adventure, you know, like dirigibles and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, the very, the very high fantasy concept. And obviously the, um, male character that Abby teams up with, Zeph, is meant to be a, a sky pirate. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, Buccaneer is a portmanteau of Buccaneer and Book. Again, I think it's a brilliant name, honestly. I bet you didn't even know there was a novel called The Last Buccaneer. I didn't know either until I was trying to relook up your video. <laughs> yeah, we were just doing, yeah, you were just doing, we should have just like, oh, crap, Buccaneer's been used twice. Ah, oh, dang it. Well, like, I, I know names have been used repeatedly, but especially when it's like a Pullman 2 name, it's not a name you think that would occur multiple times. Like, y- the name Buccaneer, it's a play on Buccaneer and Book. So, like, how often was that really going to come up? Not too often. A- as a title. But, yeah, the, the so the premise is that you have this girl named Abby who works in a library... And one day, this was it. And this the creature shows up, right? Like this adorable yeah. little ink yeah, creature. Yeah, this little ink creature. Like she drops her pen, and the little ink creature pops out, and just going like, "Ooh, yeah! Look at all these books and such. Let me just eat the words off it." But Abby's going about her business and opens up the book where Zeph is in, and Zeph just comes to life in the book and just says, "Like, oh, come on in. We're gonna have loads of swashbuckling adventures." So Abby is pulled into the book, and she comes into this sort of sky. Of, land place where Zeph is just taking her around the town and it's a very vibrant looking town and such that is until the big evil evil inkblood monster just finally grows and grows eating the whole world around them and then after the whole world is eaten Abby is kicked out of the book but Abby decides like no I have my pen I'm going to fight this ink monster so she jumps back in beats the ink monster and the day is saved doesn't she like keep the little ink monster as like a companion yeah basically just just sucks up all the ink until the ink monster is just a little pikachu thing again just like oh god you're marketable now let's put you on my shoulder yeah, I, I like that we joked about that when we watched it like we got to the part where abby defeats the uh ink creature and it shrinks back down to like a small little creature and it looks all scared and she's like all sweet to it because she like feels bad because you know it was it was just trying to eat you know it wasn't yeah. malicious or anything it was just like an animal it was just trying to survive mm-hmm. and I it's like when she picks it up and it's all cute and everything I looked at you and I'm like you know that's the thing that like someone said that's the toyetic portion of this short this <laughs> is the one that we can make all the plushies and shit off yeah. of yeah but when it comes to like these sort of like independent projects you do think of those sort of toyetic sort of things because that is what well, you people should. like like come off of like, like, well, like thing honestly I grab onto. 
Honestly, Michelle should go to, like, Etsy or uh, or Shapeway and look for an artist that's willing to, like, craft a prototype for commission so she can sell plushies of that creature and use that to perhaps fund a bigger project. I really hope that she actually follows suit on this and does maybe a a Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. I, I th- Honestly, I think a Kickstarter would be really cool if you if you can line up a strong forefronting pitch – with Kickstarter, because honestly, I have not seen anyone produce a film yet with Kickstarter, or like really an animated project. I think the closest was um, Inafune, the guy who created Mighty Number no. Nine, and yeah. then stole two hundred dollars from me because he never sent me the game. I can show you another movie sometime that was produced through Kickstarter called Dick Figures the Movie. That's also based on an anime animated series online. That's that's those stick figure bros, right? Yep. If Michelle gives it a shot, I think if she goes through Kickstarter, it has the potential to be backed. Personally, I've always been a strong uh, forefront believer for the graphic novel medium because part of it is, one, less expensive. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot cheaper to get something like that than animation. Animation costs a lot of money. I think I only just recently heard that um, – with all the money they made on the original Kickstarter for The Goon, that only paid for the animatic. Yeah. Of The Goon film. So, like, it didn't pay for The Goon movie. It paid for the rough stuff that could be turned into a movie. Yeah, and that, ma- <laughs> that makes it all, all the more sad in the end. It's like, oh my god, all that work and we just got the animatic now. Just, just give me my fucking Goon movie, goddammit. Well, you're going to need more money for that. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, now we're going to take even more of your money. I, <laughs> I think I think with Michelle, though, go graphic novel with this. Going to Image Comics, I argue that you construct it and make a pitch to Image and see if they'll pick it up for publication. Because I can see this as a cool all-ages book that has action and adventure and comedy and some drama in a lot of ways, you know, it could easily appeal to the same – like, if you're a Steven Universe fan, I feel like this is the kind of property that would really appeal to you as a person because even for a, like, six-minute short, there's a lot of heart to it. Yeah, there's no dialogue in it. You know, again, it's a thesis film. It's a short. But for a silent picture with just music to carry it, it gets its its pitch across very well, and yeah. I think it could easily be picked up. Yeah, you definitely get a lot, a lot of the emotion – Emotion th- through just the music and such, and the facial expressions. You're able to tell what Zeph and Abby are thinking just by their b- basic movements and su- such. You can see Zeph is just sort of like uh, not not womanizing, but basically so- sort of the suave, suave pirate that's just wooing Abby off her feet for, I, for the old. Yeah, picture. like like he he's not a lech or anything. He's more of the um. He's more of the charming rogue. If you ever saw The Princess Bride, the Dread Pirate Roberts, Wesley, he's a pirate, but he's also very charming. And yeah. it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a sleazy charming. It's a genuine kind of charming where you're like, I would hang out with this dude and go on some badass adventures through books. And I think it's cool because if you remember the end cards, they actually did it better where it's like, from the end cards alone, it looks like they're inhabiting the worlds. And I f- feel that basically for Michelle, she really does know the graphic novel style. Like, when I was lo- researching her artwork, I noticed her, her series, Alice and the Nightmare, and I noticed how much of a, such a bold coloring she has to that. Like, sure, that that series is much more different. It's a much more mixture of the dark and lights and such. Well, this one is just more like a bright, bright, fun adventure series. I, I think in a lot of ways, and I don't know if this was intentional, like, she was, att- you know, this was something she was trying to do. I can't help but think, the you know... It's sort of an educate. It sort of could be educational in a way, because she could have by going to the different books, she could be teaching a younger audience to appreciate other forms of literature. Like they showed like a picture during the end credits, like Sherlock Holmes, and like how many kids really know who Sherlock Holmes is anymore? Yeah, that like, is very interesting to have that sort of tendential learning <laughs> opportunity. Like because we have had book uh, like series in the past where. We had the characters going into different books and such, and just sort of like being more heavy-handed learning and such. But in this one, it's it's light enough to basically just get kids interested in it, in it, but just not bore them to tears with it. And I like that. I like the idea too of just introducing kids to to other books because I've I've actually met individuals, obviously younger than me, who don't know things like what the Wizard of Oz is 
or like they've seen the Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, Alice in Wonderland, and they're like, oh, that, that's a neat movie. You know, that's a book, right? And I know people are like, there's a book called Alice in Wonderland, and I'm just, the fuck? <laughs> really? It's like one of the quintessential forms of literature, isn't it? And like all of us, I, I'm telling you, if it ever comes to a point where someone's like, they see a Dr. Seuss movie and they don't know that he was a guy that wrote books, <laughs> that's where it's officially like, you know what? Turn off the sun. Life is just pointless. Fade away. Yeah, definitely there needs to be more, more of an intrigue of just reading books of the past and such. The, the only other thing thing I'd really like to highlight before we give uh, final verdicts on it is uh, William, uh, I think it's Asenzo, I think I'm pronouncing his name. He was the guy who did the music for this piece. Really does like carry the animation and such. It just mills together perfectly with everything. Like, like if this was just one dude on a computer... Holy shit, man, you were doing some something that, like, orchestras try to achieve in terms of, like, a mesmerizing melody. And it probably took him a few months to do that. <laughs> yeah, I can't begin to imagine how hard that is. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, th- th- it's, it's, this is a cool flick. I like the fact, too, it was also nominated for uh, Best Character Animation and Best Film at 2017's Dusty Awards. There That's go. really cool. Yeah. That's really cool to be nominated. Yeah, it definitely deserves the sort of accolades, because it definitely shows how, how much time and effort go, going into it. Definitely the fluent animation, the beautiful music, definitely just the emotion in the in the facial expressions and such really just propels it into be, being one of the most sort of, I don't really know the right way to phrase it, but it's just like, it's the most simply emotional movie that movie that I've seen in the short style of it. It's a movie that you watch and in six minutes... You just get that kind of feel good feeling. Yeah. Where it's like you see it and it kind of sucks because then it ends and you're just like, shit. I want more, a bit of, that. more of this. You know, I want I want another adventure. So, you know, I, I, I think our verdicts go without saying, right? It's a, it's a must see. Mm-hmm. Must see, definitely. Right? Yeah. We'll be placing links to, to either the Vimeo or the YouTube links in the description below so you guys can go check it out as well. I can't just recommend this, it enough. Yeah, give this short a lot of love. Share it around as much as you, much as you can. Definitely, just push it out there. Let's reach a million, a million views. Look, in a fucking era where Cartoon Network shows Teen Titans Go, or as I like to call it, Teen Titans Go Fuck Yourself, I really think there needs to be more of a push for more original creative properties now more than ever. Look. We all know Nickelodeon is a dead endeavor, especially when you consider the fact that, according to, like, Nickelodeon, they just greenlit Spongebob to go until, like, 2020. We have Teen Titans Go Fuck Yourself running how many hours a day now? It's not like, dude, do you remember when we saw that schedule for, like, Cartoon Network, and it was, like, 12 consecutive hours of Teen Titans Go, and you just sit there, you're like, do you not have any other shows? <laughs> Yeah, even if you like Teen Titans Go, that just, that seems like absolute favoritism over, over one series. Look, I love Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I think it was an awesome cartoon. But even when Cartoon Network was showing Ed, Ed, and Eddie nonstop on Cartoon Network, even I was like, look, I love the Eds. The Eds are great. Y'all need to back the fuck up, though. Yeah, really. I, I, I'd like to watch something else. Maybe some, like, Billy and Mandy would be good. Yeah, just it's sort of any like, other cartoon? Yeah, it's sort of binge-watching. It's just like series on going on and on and on. It's fine for like a day special. Like, oh, look, it's Scooby-Doo Day. Watch all these movies all in a row. Ooh. But not just like, watch Scooby-Doo Dodd stop for hours on end. I honestly argue the only show I could watch non-stop, no matter what, is fucking Looney Tunes because <laughs> it's just because it, first off they're all very short and they're all just very funny like vignettes of just wacky antics yeah, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're like eight minutes of peace. <laughs> like they're, and they don't really like it's not like really watching the same show over and over again. It's like different setup each time, so there's more variety. Yeah, it's not always it. bug. It's not always just Bugs and Daffy dicking around. There are multiple characters. <laughs> 
Like, at, at some point, you watch like the same show and over, and you just have to ask yourself, like, how fucking stupid are these people? Like, it, it gets to just sort of that point. Yeah. I think we live in an age now where the beauty of like the internet is we can find creatives out there, and if they're willing to share their content with us, the best we could do in return is share back. Let their content get the exposure they need. Let's be – like the days of old, be a patron of the arts. In fact, Michelle actually does have a, pa- a Patreon at um, – I mean, we'll put a link in the description, but it's uh, patreon.com slash MishaCakes, M-I-S-H-A-C-A-K-E-S. Be sure to check it out. If you can drop a couple bucks in the bin to support a fellow artist, go and do that. I highly recommend it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, definitely. If you guys think of any sort of short films or any sort of big animators out there that you would think need a bit more exposure, place down in the in the comments below. And if there's a the- short you want to actually share with us, yeah, you, you make a great idea, though. If there are shorts you know, why not? Maybe we could spotlight some on the show. Yeah, exactly. We got a whole Watch and Stuff special <laughs> of just animated shorts. <laughs> yes, because the last Watch and Stuff special worked out so well for us. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Watching Stuff, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe. Um, if you'd like to, you can support us on Patreon. We actually do have tiers now where if you support certain tiers on our Patreon, you're paying us to watch something. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you know, it can't be like porn or something, I guess. You know, it's... Well, it could be porn. We got VidMe now. I think you can post stuff on there if it's censored. Yeah, but... but, but Oh, yeah. Well, you can post censored stuff on, on YouTube, too. I see a bunch. Like, doesn't most of Brad Jones's career circle around him <laughs> reviewing pornography? So, yeah, even if it's animated porn, maybe you can try it out. But, yeah, you can pay us to either do a watch and stuff, your choice of what we watch. You can you can fucking basically do a tier where you can get Y-Boy to watch any movie he you know you want him to do, and he'll review it for you. And you can do the same thing to get me to sit through any movie you want me to, to to take a look at know that if we watch the movie and we feel like there isn't any material that doesn't void your reward by all means you'll just have to pick another subject that we can play around with yeah but you don't feel like you want to support the p- patreon we also have our t public store where you get loads of some of our merchandise that we produce every so often <laughs> a big I, I actually right. this this shirt i just got actually did come from t public oh yeah Nice. Yeah, this really cool Alice in Wonderland shirt I got is actually from T Public. They actually, when they sent us the um, the uh, mystery boxes for us to go through, and I did do a video of that, so be sure to check that out. This was one of the uh, shirts that actually did end up coming into that, and it was, it's really cool because I love I love the old school animated Disney Alice in Wonderland film. Yeah, they're all high quality. They all feel they all feel good, and if, and if you want to just support us, just go go on there and see if you see if you like anything on there. Yeah, so, you know, Patreon and TeePublic, links are in the description below. Any and all sort of support helps us to grow the channel. Be sure to share videos, to like, subscribe. And, you know, as we always say here, until, you know, we forget it on occasion, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because that happens, be sure to tune in. To tune grin. Holy crap, we actually almost synced that up perfectly. (laughs) Well, we almost did, but (laughs) but you added that at the end, which ruined it. Yeah! Yeah!